I want to caution those of you who may be present in courtroom not that uh, any kind of uh, verbal or, or other uh, uh, responses or gestures are just not appropriate. Everyone understands that. Uh, of course, finds that the case is properly uh, brought in Banks County. There's no exceptions to venue or the uh, jurisdiction of the court and I'm going to proceed to announce findings. I want to first thank counsel for your courtesy to the court and to each other. It is always uh, enjoyable to try a case with professional attorneys who uh, are prepared and uh, do a, a good job of representing their clients. So I appreciate that. And, uh, just, these are tough cases. These are hard cases. There's so much work that goes into all of this. These candidates have done before they got to this point. Uh, and uh, and I, anyone who offers themselves to office <coughs> is undertaking uh, a great service because it is a difficult service. So um, thank you and acknowledge that. Uh, I want to first deal with the what I think is in most of the contested votes an overriding legal issue, and that relates to the determination of the interpretation of the uh, 2011 special session House Bill 1 as subsequently amended by uh, House Bill 829 in 2012 concerning the composition of District 28. And uh, the court understands that when the legislature redistricts, it employs the census tracts to arrive at the uh, composition of the districts and that that data allows the uh, General Assembly to arrive at uh, proportional districts. However, the court is not convinced that by employing census tracts or census blocks as the method by which they may allocate the uh, voters who have enumerated in those census tracts that the General Assembly intended to make the boundaries of the districts coterminous with the census tracts and blocks as uh, published uh, in the uh, by the Census Bureau and has been dem and has been demonstrated with the layers of from the reapportionment office, which reveal that in some cases, individuals who may be enumerated in a census tract may be residing in a county different from the uh, county to which that census tract has been assigned. The court does not find that the designation of Banks County under the description of District uh, 28 in the legislation indicates an intent to use something other than the political subdivision of Banks County as it, as, as it is commonly known. The court 
acknowledges that the plaintiff's proof of the boundaries of Banks County relying on the census tract data reveals that there are some voters who are in the census tracts that are not enumerated in Banks County. But the court does not find that those boundaries as shown in the census data and the layers that were superimposed over the map establish the lines of Banks County. Rather, the court will rely on the testimony which has shown that the voters at issue in this case were properly allowed to vote in Banks County, that being the Stewarts and the Speeds, and allowed to vote in House District 28. The court would find that although the voters on Dan Waters Road were, they are properly in Banks County and they could have voted in the election if they had attempted to, that they would, that their residence is in Banks County and they could properly have registered in Banks County since Dan Waters Road is recognized as a boundary of Banks County. So as to the individual challenge votes, as to the Stewarts and Speed votes, the court will find that those were legally cast. They, under the common understanding of the definition of Banks County as shown in the legislation, they were within the, they and those on Dan Waters, that side of Dan Waters Road were in the Banks County and that was the, that would be an appropriate voting district. Now, the voters who were on the Banks County side of Dan Waters Road, but who were registered and in this case voted in Jackson County, the court does not find that their votes were illegally rejected. The court considers that they would have had the opportunity to vote if they had chosen to vote and maybe been asked to cast a provisional ballot that we could have, the court could have determined that they were legally entitled to vote in the House District 28 special primary election. But since they did not take, there's been no proof that any of them took steps to vote in that election and that their votes were rejected or their efforts to vote were rejected, the court will not find that those votes were improperly, in the words of the statute, they were not legal votes that were rejected because the, those, there's no proof that those individuals sought to vote in the election. I think the other categories of challenge votes address the votes that were cast or not cast as the case may be by, allegedly not cast as the case may be of Ms. Denton and Mr. Burrell. The court, although, although there's some indication that Ms. Denton and Ms. Denton testified that she felt her vote did not count, the court is persuaded by the tabulations and that were conducted from the voting machine and the tapes that were run and the reconciliation by the elections supervisor that the plaintiff has failed to prove that Ms. Denton's vote was not counted. So as to that particular voter, that would, the court does not find an irregularity. As to the voter Michael Burrell, it is apparent and the defendant tacitly admits that Michael Burrell was improperly allowed to cast 
to vote in this election. And his, the Board of Elections uh, Supervisor or election, uh, there is, the court finds that there was an irregularity that occurred and that he was impermissibly allowed, allowed to cast two votes in the uh, special primary and therefore that represents Ms. Durrell's one of those votes was improperly cast uh, and should be considered an irregularity. The plaintiffs direct the court to the law concerning uh, entitlement to vote and uh, the requirement that a voter be a resident of the county or the district in which they vote. Uh, the court has carefully considered all the evidence that's been submitted and in connection, now address each individual voter whose vote was contested. As to David Scott Brand, the court is not satisfied that the uh, vote was uh, an illegal vote because the evidence does not establish that he had intended to change his residence uh, more than 30 days prior to the, the election, or that he had changed his residence. Uh, the court is not persuaded by the circumstances of Mr. Brand's uh, case that uh, his vote was uh, improper, and therefore that challenge is declined. As to voter Benjamin Lipstein, the court has again carefully reviewed the evidence in the case and the court is not satisfied that Mr. Lipsey's vote was improper. Uh, although Mr. Lipsey's warranty deed that was uh, executed on April 25 of 2018 indicated the connection to Onslow County, North Carolina, the court is not persuaded that there is sufficient proof that he had intended to change his residence to a location outside of, uh, of uh, Habersham County. Uh, the, he votes in per the court considered that he, uh, the manner in which he voted and that there's no proof of change in his need of residence. As to the challenged vote of Terry Elizabeth Akers, as we recall, Ms. Akers had sold her residence. Uh, she purchased property on uh, 360 Garrison Road in uh, 2015. She sold her uh, residence uh, in uh, Habersham County in June of 2017. And although she may intend to eventually reside at 360 Garrison Road, it has not been shown that she has ever resided there, and therefore the court cannot assume or take it that that was a residence to which she intends to return. Since she never established that as her residence, the court has to consider that when she moved uh, out of uh, on, in June of 2017 and moved in to Banks County to reside at uh, East Railroad and Alt uh, Avenue in Alto, that at that time she had intended to change her residence from Habersham County to uh, Banks County. She, in this election, it was shown that she voted in Habersham County and that she was not qualified to vote in Habersham County. She had not registered uh, in Banks County and so her vote uh, was not properly cast because she was, only, she was not qualified to vote in Habersham County. It, ironically, if she had taken the steps to register in uh, Banks County, uh, she would have been in the same district, but there, she was not, her vote was not properly cast in Habersham County. The court has considered the circumstances of James and Sherlene Allen, and the court is not persuaded that the evidence, circumstantial evidence which the plaintiff has presented establishes an intent to uh, 
change or to change their residence more than 30 days before the election. The property that was owned in Homer was uh, sold uh, to another party in August of 2018, and there was a uh, there was an some change of address file to an address in Gainesville. The record shows that the Allens purchased property in Gainesville on December 7th. And the court uh, finds that although the circumstances suggest that the Allens vote, uh, vote may have, uh, they may, that the Allens <coughs> may have Change, intended to change residence more than 30 days before the election, the court is not persuaded that the plaintiff has carried the burden as to the Allens. The court has considered uh, the uh, circumstances of Mr. Ewing, and uh, although he had uh, sold property in April of 2017, there was no indication of his intent to reside at the Hearthstone Drive address until he uh, <coughs> completed the voter certificate on November 6th. And uh, so the court is not satisfied that the plaintiff has carried the burden as to Mr. Ewing since because the evidence allows for the possibility of an illegal ballot, ballot but the court cannot find that uh, the change of residence occurred more than uh, 30 days prior to the election. As to uh, Patricia Bauer, uh, the evidence shows that uh, she moved from House District 28 in April of 2017. And she uh, intended, she testified that that new address on Liberty Estates, that she intended for that to be her residence and that she filed a homestead exemption at that address in November of 2017. She also signed uh, a voter certificate. Um, and this is, I, I believe her testimony was that she would have signed the voter certificate of, on May 22nd with the address of 122 New Liberty Estates Road. I did not find that voter certificate in the evidence, but her testimony was affirmative that she had intended to move her and establish a new residence outside of House District 28 more than 30 days prior to the election. And although she cast a provisional ballot. The evidence shows that that ballot was counted and that information that would have, uh, uh, might have uh, caused uh, the ballot to not be accepted was only discovered after it had already been counted. The, the indication on the evidence is that the vote was counted and that was, she would, sh should not have been uh, entitled to vote in uh, House District special uh, primary election. As to voter Constance Franklin, uh, the court is satisfied that she uh, had, uh, and I may have gotten this May 22nd certificate. She, I think we did have the May 22nd certificate from Ms. Bauer. We did not have it from Ms. Franklin, so I have that backwards. But Ms. Franklin did testify that she moved, intended to change her residence by October of 2017, and that uh, she uh, uh, was no longer in the district. Uh, Shoulder Road, where she resided, was in House District 10. That move was conducted more than 30 days prior to the election. The court will find that Ms. Franklin was not entitled to vote in the House 28 election. So in sum, the court is persuaded the plaintiff, persuaded by the plaintiff that voters Durrell, Akers, Bowers, 
Bauer and Franklin were allowed to vote when they lacked the proper qualifications to vote in the district or county in which they voted. Now, the, uh, I think the voters, uh, the other voters, Moody, Vickery, Vickery, Treadwell, and Wilhites, I think I dealt with uh, in a pro with a, in earlier in my announcement, announcement, and then of course the Speeds and the uh, uh, Stewarts are uh, the court finds that they were properly allowed to vote. Have I overlooked any challenges that the plaintiff uh, suggests should be uh, considered? So, and there's, there's, there's from the defense view, are there any uh, issues as to individual voters which the court has overlooked making a ruling? No, I don't see anybody here considering that. <laughs> well, in sum total, the evidence has shown that uh, the there were at least four voters who were improperly permitted to vote in this election. The court understands that the uh, margin of difference between the candidates was two votes. And under the provisions of 21-5-521, the court is persuaded that there are a sufficient number of votes uh, that were illegal such as to cast doubt on the outcome of the election. And so the court is compelled to find that it must order a second or a third election in, in this matter. Does that address all the issues that are raised by any petition in this case? Uh, yes, it does. Thank you. Mr. Tyson, is there more work any, any issues from your standpoint? Research will reveal who has the authority to do that. Just from a practical matter, uh, whether what is necessary to accomplish another election could be achieved uh, within the time in which the legislature is in, se in session is, is questionable. But uh, we certainly don't want to delay uh, reaching a, a resolution of this election. But on the other hand, uh, the court has made rulings. Each side could take issue with, and we'll, we'll certainly consider any uh, motion that is, is filed to, to stay uh, this. Uh, Ms. Davis? Yes, and Your Honor, I would request that as soon as possible we get the discussions underway for the new election. Um, I, I do, I've looked into this recently, and it, it, through the last contest, an appeal does not stay the new election from going forward. An appeal has to stay it, it has to be requested. And by the Georgia Supreme Court, and the reason why that is is it's very important to get the process going to get the new election set in session. I understand that. Of course, no action is, then an appeal can be filed until we have reduced this uh, announcement to, to writing and entered it as an order filed with the clerk. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Evans, I'm going to ask that you take leadership of uh, preparing the draft. Mr. Tyson, there may be aspects of this that you want to have a hand in, so I'm going to ask that, as well as uh, Mr. Stroud, Mr. Black, that I know our other uh, counsel in uh, the gallery may well want to uh, have input into the matter. So uh, we'll ask that you uh, prepare that as quickly as you can. And if, if, you know, hopefully uh, y'all can agree to the uh, uh, substance of what the court has been able to announce. And to the extent that you can't, we'll certainly uh, make any written uh, findings that we need to make. Okay. All right, is there anything else from any party? All right, well, thank you all very much, and uh, we look forward to receiving you. Thank you. Again, we'll be adjourned.